to our prenatal series. Originally, we would have had this interactive class in person, but we have now transitioned this course to an online format. We hope this course will provide you with some information as we're trying our best to mimic the original in person. My name's Natasha. And I'm Melissa. We are the two AmeriCorps members at the 16th Street Clinic in the Women's Wellness Department. We help educate first-time moms and provide prenatal care and information to help facilitate a healthy pregnancy for patients here at the 16th Street Clinic. Before we begin, if you have any questions or comments throughout the class, please respond to the link that we have in our bio. It is completely confidential and we will respond to you as soon as we can. If anything is urgent or an emergency, please call the clinic as soon as possible. So let's begin our prenatal crash course. Let's start off with a mini quiz. It does not have to be correct. You can guess to the best of your ability. How big can the female uterus grow during pregnancy? One, two times the size, two, 10 times the size, three, 50 times the size, or four, 500 times the size. Just take a moment to think about it and guess what you think. Okay, so let's reveal the answer. How big can your uterus grow during pregnancy? It's not two times the size, it's not 10 times the size either. It's not even 50 times the size. So the mini quiz answer is actually 500 times the size, which is crazy to think about. This image shows the size and expansion of the uterus throughout the weeks in the body throughout pregnancy. Below the belly button, anywhere between 22 weeks is a rough estimate of the gestational age. This is the reason why between 16 and 22 weeks an ultrasound is required. In the ultrasound appointment, the estimated due date is based off this measurement, therefore will be accurate and most likely will change from the original estimated due date. For first-time moms, it is a rough estimate because it is the first time the uterus is growing. If your BMI is higher, a deeper ultrasound will be required early in the pregnancy. Fun fact, your pre-pregnancy uterus is the size of a small lemon and it returns to this size about six weeks after giving birth. Today, we will be discussing the third trimester slash late stages of pregnancy, labor and delivery, and postnatal care slash caring for a newborn. We will be starting with what to expect in the third trimester, how to prepare for the arrival of your baby, and how to manage pain and discomfort. We have another mini quiz question here. When does the third trimester begin? 1. 14 weeks 2. 22 weeks 3. 28 weeks or 4. 37 weeks. Just pause the video and guess to the best of your ability. Let's reveal the answer. When does the third trimester begin? It's not 14 weeks. At 14 weeks, second trimester starts. It's not 22 weeks or 37 weeks either. So whoever guessed 28 weeks would be correct. The first trimester includes 0 through 13 weeks, the second, 14 through 27 weeks, and then the third, 28 through 40 weeks. Preparing for a newborn. Let's talk about the checklist of items you will slash might need for your baby if you don't already have them. First, you will need a crib, bassinet, or a safe place for your baby to sleep. The baby is not safe sleeping with you or anyone else. It is recommended that your baby sleeps in a crib in the same room as you and your partner, but not in the same bed. If you do not have a safe place for your baby to sleep, please contact the Women's Wellness Department and we can try to help you obtain one. Next, you will need a car seat. This is mandatory to have before you leave with your baby from the hospital. The hospital will not let you leave without a car seat for your baby as it is the law. The 16 Street Clinic offers a car seat class online, which we recommend to all our moms. Again, you can contact the Women's Wellness Department for more information. You also might want to invest in a changing station to change diapers in a safe and clean area that are comfortable for the baby. The changing table needs to be a safe place and baby should not be swallowed when on the changing table. The changing table needs to have a surrounding barrier to prevent your newborn from falls. You will need plenty of diapers. Newborn pampers are not needed and pampers are given by the hospital. Within a couple of days, your baby will be using number one diapers. They can be bought in your local stores. It is also important to buy a diaper bag in order to be able to bring all of your baby's necessities when you are not at home or are traveling. You may include diapers, wipes, bottles, a change of clothes, a changing bag, pacifiers, or maybe even a blanket. Next, you will need a thermometer. A thermometer is a device to check temperatures. You can put the thermostat under the baby's armpit to get the most accurate temperature. 
You can also invest in a stroller. A stroller is a device to place your baby when you are traveling from one place to another. It is also possible that you might want to get some toys. Toys are important when it comes to the development in babies. However, toys can be overstimulating as well. Some examples include colorful toys, noisy toys, and textured toys. Too much stimulation is not good after coming out of such a cozy place. First, introduce black and white toys. An important rule also is to make sure the toy is bigger than the baby's mouth as it could be a choking hazard. It is not recommended that your baby sleeps with any toys as again, this can also be a choking hazard. It is also important to prepare your house for the arrival of your newborn. It is recommended to baby proof your home now because home prepping with a toddler is a lot more difficult when they are running around. This includes moving dangerous chemicals and prescription drugs to a secure or high location or putting child locks on lower drawers. It is best to put all the unsafe items in one place with one lock, buying baby gates, and plugging unused electrical outlets with plastic covers. Lastly, it is important to be prepared for the birth of your baby. Have a birth plan set and even a backup plan. Some things you should be considering while you are waiting for the arrival of your baby are discussing with your care provider beforehand about his or her preferences and usual practices during labor and the pre-registration at the hospital, in our case, St. Mary's. Fill out the necessary paperwork and sort out insurance matters beforehand. We recommend you have a route to the hospital planned and timed, and even an alternate route in case of construction, an accident, or traffic. Make sure your car is filled up with gas in preparation that your baby may come at any time. Remember, three weeks before your due date and two weeks after your due date is completely normal. However, signs and symptoms of labor before 36 weeks are not normal and is a sign of preterm labor. If you are feeling that you are going into labor before your 36 weeks, please call the clinic. Pack a diaper bag with baby necessities and spare clothes for yourself and your partner and a pair of clothes for your newborn. Wash your baby clothes before usage and remove all tags inside the clothes as it can be bothersome to newborns. As of currently, St. Mary's Hospital is limiting the number of times patients and visitors are entering and exiting. We recommend for partners to also pack a bag with three days worth of clothes and plenty of money for food. There is also a refrigerator in your room and we recommend that you bring some food from home. When you are finished with labor and your baby is ready to go home with you, you must have a car seat by law. This is very important. However, when you leave the hospital, a newborn baby is not big enough for the car seat yet. In order to accommodate this, we make two rolls with a blanket and lay them next to their head for stability reasons. The 16th Street Clinic now offers a car seat class. This class teaches the correct installation of a car seat and the proper fitting of your infant in the car seat. With attendance, you are able to receive a car seat at a reduced price. Please contact Sarai Martinez for more information. Finally, be familiar with the layout of St. Mary's Hospital. The Labor and Delivery Department is located on the second floor of St. Mary's in their Women's Medical Center. Some of you may be familiar with the area and know it as the same place where you get your ultrasounds. There will be a link in our bio of a virtual tour of St. Mary's that you can look at. Here is a visual map of St. Mary's. When you are ready to go into labor, you are having regular contractions or your water has broken, please call the clinic and wait for instructions from your provider. If your provider tells you to go to the hospital, make your way to St. Mary's and when you arrive, you may park your car in parking garage B. You must enter the hospital through the Women's Medical Center entrance and make your way to the second floor. Please do not enter through the emergency room, as you may be stalled and it's located on the other side of the hospital. If you do happen to enter through the emergency room, please ask for a wheelchair on your trip to the Women's Hospital. However, after 8 p.m., the Women's Hospital entrance closes, but a security guard will be present to direct you to the Women's Birthing Center. We recommend you still enter through the second floor of the Women's Medical Center, even after 8 p.m. Managing Discomfort did you know there are many ways to help with the discomfort of pregnancy slash process of birth? For example, exercise strengthens your muscles for labor, making giving birth easier. It is recommended that our moms continue to stay active throughout their pregnancies. We advise taking frequent walks, going for a swim, and doing yoga to stay active. These are low impact ways to exercise and continue with your healthy pregnancy. We recommend staying away from impact sports, such as soccer, basketball, rugby, water skiing, etc. We also recommend that you do not horseback ride or do anything active that has a falling risk. However, if you have never done a specific activity before, we do not recommend you start it then. 
For example, if you are looking into doing a kickboxing class but have never been through slash done one, we recommend you stick to a more comfortable exercise routine that you've done in the past. With whatever exercises you do, make sure you stabilize your back and lower pelvis. Please talk to your provider before beginning any new exercises. Another important muscle group to exercise is your Kegel muscles. They are located on your pelvic floor. You can work them by squeezing your muscles and holding them for a few seconds, and repeat this several times per day. This will help strengthen them for labor. A way to remember to do them is to make a trigger for yourself. For example, every time you go to the bathroom, practice stopping and starting peeing by squeezing your muscles. Do this 5-10 to 10 times. Another time that you may be feeling discomfort is at bedtime. We are going to go over some tips that might help you sleep, therefore helping to make sure that you are well rested. We recommend that our moms avoid technology right before bed, including the use of TV and phone. Also, try to get at least 8 hours of sleep every night to avoid extra fatigue. It is common for our moms in the third trimester to have trouble sleeping due to discomfort. Try sleeping on your left side, not on your back or your tummy. Illustrated in this picture, we demonstrate the correct and the wrong way of sleeping. The three yellow lightnings shown on the image are pressure points on our body. Avoid putting pressure on those areas. Here are two incorrect sleeping positions. They put pressure on your pelvis and laying on your stomach is not comfortable or good for the baby, especially later in pregnancy. We understand it can be frustrating not being able to sleep on your stomach or your back. Try your best to sleep in the recommended positions. Try to sleep with a pillow in between your legs, avoiding putting strain on your knees and hips. In the correct position, there will be no pressure on these specific points in your body. This can help improve sleep and even reduce back pain. If nothing works and you like to sleep on your back, make a roll with a hand towel the size of the gap between your back and a flat surface to fit the natural arc of the back to avoid pressure of the umbilical cord. Place this roll between that back and enjoy it. If you find yourself falling asleep on your side and waking up on your back, this is okay. Try to put a pillow or a barrier to block you from rolling onto your backside. Another thing we suggest is to keep water and snacks ready on the side of the table to avoid getting out of bed frequently. Moms usually get thirsty and hungry at this hour. There are also many other discomforts that you may be feeling as well. This can include nausea and vomiting, heartburn, and constipation. Remember, nausea and vomiting is more common in the first trimester of pregnancy, but it is not uncommon to persist into the third as well. To avoid this, try to eat 5-6 to six small meals a day. Avoid spicy and greasy foods, drink fluids, and eat a balance of carbs and proteins. With heartburn, try to avoid eating and drinking an hour or two before bed. But also, try to sleep elevated up a bit and eat smaller, more frequent meals. Lastly, to ease constipation, drink lots of water, eat high fiber foods such as leafy greens and fruits, and exercise regularly. For the next part of our presentation, we will talk about labor and delivery. This includes true labor versus false labor, the stages of labor, the possibility of a C-section, episiotomy, and how to support your loved one during labor. Here is a comparison between true and false labor. False labor is usually categorized by irregular contractions that do not get closer together in time. They usually stop slash are relieved after taking a walk, changing positions, or taking a warm shower. There is no change in the cervix and there is no bloody show. We will talk about what the bloody show is later in the presentation. True labor is categorized by regular contractions that get stronger, last longer, and become more frequent. Walking, changing activities, or positions does not relieve this pain. Lastly, the cervix begins to dilate and a bloody show may occur. Now we are going to see if we can tell if these women are experiencing true or false labor based on their logs. To distinguish the difference between true and false labor symptoms, it is important to learn the 4-1-1 rule. If contractions are 4 minutes apart, they are 1 minute long, and continue for one hour and or your water breaks, then this is true labor. Also, if you're a first time mom, the contractions can be up to five minutes apart with each contraction getting stronger and stronger. Okay, we have a few examples for us to try. 
In this one, the first contraction started at 2.05 a.m. and lasted about 30 seconds. The second contraction started at 2.20 a.m. and lasted 20 seconds. The third contraction started at 12.27 a.m. and lasted 15 seconds. Lastly, the fourth contraction lasted 15 seconds and began around 1 a.m. We can see that the time between contractions varies greatly from 15 minutes to 7 minutes to 33 minutes later. So, do we think this is true or false labor? Why or why not? Take a few moments and think about it. This is not indicative of true labor. These can be Braxton contractions. They are not evenly timed and all the contractions last under one minute and are not getting any longer with time. Okay, we have the next example here. The first contraction started at 12.05 a.m. and lasted 45 seconds. The second contraction started at 12.09 a.m. and lasted 50 seconds. Then the third contraction began at 12.13 a.m. and lasted 55 seconds. And lastly, the fourth contraction started at 12.17 a.m. and lasted 60 seconds. So what are we thinking? If you're thinking it's true labor, then you'd be correct. The contractions are exactly 4 minutes apart, are lasting over 30 seconds, they are regular, and the contraction time continues to increase. Here we have our last example. So contraction 1 is at 12.05 a.m., lasted 30 seconds. Contraction 2 at 12.15 a.m., lasted 35 seconds. Contraction 3 at 12.24 a.m., lasted 38 seconds. Contraction 4 at 12.32 a.m., lasted 40 seconds. Contraction 5 at 12.38 a.m., lasted 45 seconds. Contraction 6 at 12.43 a.m., lasted 45 seconds. Contraction 7 at 12.47 a.m. and lasted 50 seconds. And lastly, contraction 8 at 12.51 a.m. and lasted 55 seconds. We can see that the contraction time gets closer and closer to 3 to 5 minutes as the time goes on, and the duration of the contraction gets longer. So what are we thinking? I believe this is another example of true labor. The contractions are very regular, time is getting shorter, and the duration of the contraction is getting longer and longer. Currently, there is an app called Contraction Timer Time Labor that is free and available in the App Store and Google Play. All apps are about the same, so don't worry about which one you select to download. They will time your contractions for you and document them. Feel free to assign your partner the role of keeping track of contractions if it helps you be more present with your changes and focusing in your breathing. Now we will be discussing the stages of labor. To understand all three sub-steps of stage 1, you'll need to see how much your cervix must dilate during that stage. Your cervix starts out about the size of a Cheerio and stretches all the way to the size of a bagel before the birth of your baby. Here we have a more in-depth comparison between the three stages of labor. As we said before, stage 1, or early labor, can last over 12 hours and the contractions are 5 to 20 minutes apart and last 30 to 60 seconds. Active labor may last up to 6 hours and the contractions are between 2 to 4 minutes, lasting 45 to 60 seconds. Your cervix is dilating and expanding just a few more centimeters. Lastly, the transition stage can last a few minutes to a few hours. The contractions are 2 to 3 minutes apart and last 60 to 90 seconds. Your cervix is dilated completely at 10 centimeters. Here is a visual component into the stages of labor. Stage 1 is early labor. This starts from the onset of labor to complete dilation of the cervix to 10 centimeters. This stage could last about 12 to 19 hours. Stage 2, called active labor, is the cervical dilation to the delivery of the fetus. This stage can last minutes to hours. Stage 3 is from the birth of the fetus to the birth of the placenta. This lasts 20 minutes or less. Stage 4 is your first hour postpartum. Your body is resetting, your uterus immediately begins shrinking, and you're going to begin breastfeeding your baby right away. Now we will focus on the three substages of the first stage, early and active labor, and then the transition stage. Here is a quick mini quiz question. True or false? Once you have a baby, your cervix stays the same size of a bagel. This is false. Once you have a baby, your cervix will begin returning to its pre-pregnancy size. Now at this point in the class, if it were in person, we would have you grab a chair and a yoga mat to practice some stretches and positions that will help you during labor. Now we are going to show you some positions and demonstrate them with you. Feel free to grab a chair and do the positions and stretches with us. Here are some relaxation techniques that can help you keep your mind at ease. 
Remember, it's important to have your body relaxed and not panic or have any body tense. We can use progressive muscle relaxation, touch relaxation, massage, and guided imagery to help relax and distract ourselves. These can be done in the early stages of labor and help manage the pain of contractions. First, we will explain progressive muscle relaxation. This is an exercise that can reduce stress and anxiety in your body by having you slowly tense and then relax each muscle. We begin at one side of the body and slowly work our way all the way to the opposite. This can help provide an immediate feeling of relaxation and it would be best if you practice this multiple times before your due date. With practice, you will begin to become more aware of when you are experiencing tension and you will be able to relax yourself. During this exercise, the muscles should be tense but not strained. Skip any areas that caused you pain or are injured. Focus on the feeling of tension release in each muscle, which results in the feeling of relaxation. Let's show an example. Let's start by sitting back or lying down in a comfortable position. Close your eyes if you can. Begin by taking a deep breath and notice the feeling of air filling in your lungs. Hold your breath for a few seconds. Release your breath slowly and let the tension leave your body. Repeat this a few times and note the feeling of relaxation. Now move your attention to your feet. We will start on this side of the body. Note that you may start at the head and work your way down as well. Begin to tense your feet and curl your toes in the arch of your foot. Hold the tension and notice what it feels like. Hold for five seconds. Release the tension in your foot. Notice the feeling of relaxation. Next, let's begin to focus on your lower leg. Tense the muscles in your calves, hold them tightly, and pay attention to the feeling of the tension. Hold again for five seconds. Release the tension from your lower legs and again, note the feeling of relaxation. Do this again with your upper legs and pelvis area. You can do this by holding your thighs together. Remember, do not strain, just feel a little tension. Let's hold for five seconds. Release the tension and allow your body to go limp. Notice the feeling. Continue taking deep breaths. Breathe in slowly and fill your lungs and hold it. Now we will be moving to the abdomen and the chest. Begin to tense them. You can do this by sucking in your stomach. Squeeze harder and hold the tension. Again, hold this for five seconds. Release the tension, allow your body to go limp. Next, tense the muscles in your back by bringing your shoulders together behind you. Hold them tightly. Tense them without straining and hold for five seconds. Release the tension from your back slowly. Feel the tension slowly leave your body. Notice how your body feels when you allow it to relax. Tense your arms all the way up to your shoulders. Make a fist and squeeze up to your arm. Hold for five seconds. Now release the tension from your arms and shoulders. Now move up to your head and neck. Tense your face and your neck by slowly distorting the muscles around your eyes and mouth. And hold for five seconds. Release the tension. Again, notice the new feeling of relaxation. Lastly, tense your entire body. Tense your feet, legs, stomach, chest, arms, head, and neck. Hold it for five seconds. Now release, allow all your body to go limp. Pay attention to when you feel relaxed and how it's different when you are tensed. Slowly wake up your body by slowly moving your muscles. Stretch and open your eyes when you're ready. If this helps you feel relaxed, amazing. If this is something that you don't think will help relax you during labor, we have some other techniques that might help as well. The next relaxation technique is called touch relaxation. Just like the exercise before, we will start at one part of the body. Let's start with the head. 
starting at your temples, tense your face and mouth. Have your partner apply firm but gentle pressure on this area. When they touch you, relax that muscle group. Then move to the base of your skull, shoulders, back, arms, hands, legs, and feet, and do the same. Tense each muscle group and have your partner touch and apply gentle pressure. Relax the muscle group that your partner is touching. Again, move from head to toe. Another relaxation technique we will give you is massages. This is an exercise that your partner can help you with again. Massages can help calm her tense muscles during labor. When massaging, be sure to communicate with her, tell her what you are doing, and be as supportive as possible. In this technique, your partner can massage your shoulders and back by making large sweeping motions or by small circular motions. Massages down her arms and legs should be sweeping motions as well. Small circular motions are best when massaging the brow and temple area. Massages will cause your muscles to relax and your brain will release endorphins, which can help your sense of well-being. During actual labor, make sure you ask her if it's okay to touch and massage her. Ask before touching and taking away. Keep the same rhythm throughout your massage as this will allow her to sink her breathing and allow her to relax. You can experiment with your partner to choose what's best for you. The last technique is called guided imagery. This is when you imagine yourself in an environment that calms you. It's the special, peaceful place you go in your imagination. Concentrate on the details such as smells, colors, or sensations on your skin. It might even be helpful to play a nature tape or soft music. Practice these techniques often the last four to six weeks of your pregnancy, as this will help immensely during your labor. Now we are going to switch gears. Although there is no best position for labor, it is better to be familiar with some positions and poses that can make you feel more comfortable. Feel free to practice these with us during the video. These first positions are to help you manage the pain of a contraction before you begin pushing. The first one is leaning forward on a chair. If your back hurts, this position can help ease the back pain. The picture shows a demonstration of this position. You can straddle a chair or lean over on a table or countertop. The next position is rocking. You can gently rock forward and back while sitting in a sturdy chair, edge of a bed, or a birthing ball. Keep a rhythm as rhythmic motions can be soothing. The third position is kneeling. Use a birthing ball or a pile of pillows and kneel on the ground. Rest your arms and upper body on the top of the ball or the pillows, as shown above. Here is a demonstration of the fourth position, hands and knees. This position takes pressure off of your spine and can also ease back pain. It can also boost the baby's oxygen supply. The fifth position is lunging. Raise one foot on a sturdy chair. During each contraction, gently lean towards the raised foot. If the chair is too high, you can also use a footstool or something sturdy to lower it to the ground. The next position is sitting. Sit in a comfortable sturdy chair with one leg propped up. During each contraction, gently lean towards the raised foot. See the video above for the demonstration. The next birthing position is semi-sitting. Prop yourself up with pillows or ask your partner to sit behind you for support. During each contraction, lean forward and draw your knees towards your body. The next position is lying on your side. Lie on your left side and place one or more pillows between your knees. This helps blood flow to the uterus and can ease your back pain. This can be effective if you are tired and just want to lie down. The next position is swaying. Lean on your partner for support during contractions or wrap your arms around your partner's neck and start swaying, as if you were slow dancing. If needed, this can be done while you are kneeled on a bed or your partner is standing up. The last demonstration for positions we have is squatting. Use a sturdy chair for support while squatting and staying low to the ground. This can help expand the uterus for labor. For the second phase during active labor, here are some positions that can help you push. Lying on your side, kneeling slash leaning on a prop, standing against your partner, typical birthing positions, and a leg spread. Here we have a demonstration of lying on your side. You can lie on your left side, lift your right leg up, or your partner can help you hold your leg up as well. For kneeling slash leaning on a prop, sit on your knees with your toes together. You can lean your upper body on a couch or a chair. This is an easy position for your partners to use relaxation techniques on you. The next technique is standing against your partner. Stand up and lean your back against your partner. Have them put their arms underneath their armpits to support you. 
partner should have their leg between yours to better support your weight. Here we have the typical birthing position, laying down with legs spread and up. It is common when the baby is about to arrive. This is the sitting up with legs spread. Prop yourself with pillows or ask your partner to sit behind you for support. During each contraction, lean forward and draw your knees toward the body. This can also help push and open the pelvis up. In summary, any sort of walking, standing, leaning position can help early labor by stimulating contractions and help the baby head descent using gravity. Any of the kneeling techniques can help relieve back pain and help baby rotate to the desired position to give birth. Sitting positions can also help baby descend and allows you to rest in between contractions. Lastly, squatting can also help the baby's descent and open up the pelvis to provide more room. Overall, these are some positions that can help you manage contractions throughout your labor. Pick some that are most comfortable for you. You can practice these before birth as well. Now we are going to switch gears and talk about what to expect right before labor and during early labor. Before I click the next slide, I would like to give you all a warning. There's a graphic picture that shows what we call a mucus plug or a bloody show. If you would like to skip it, skip to minute 31 and 36 seconds. This is what we call the mucus plug, or a bloody show. It is a discharge that looks pink, brown, or red. It is a sign that the cervix is changing in preparation for labor. However, some women do not notice it or do not even have it. If there is not blood presence, it does not necessarily mean labor is nearing. One might see it, one might not. It can also happen the day before or the day of. The amount of mucus varies as well. The point of this slide is that this may occur to you. And if it does, it is normal. However, do not look for a mucus plug when labor is near. Remember, if you have any questions, leave a comment or write down your question as we will have a link for questions in the bio for a Google link. Now let's talk about early labor and the pain during labor. We have all heard about the pain of labor from our mother, aunt, grandmother, friend who's had a child, or even in school and classes. So what causes all the pain during labor? In reality, there are many different aspects that cause pain during the birth of your baby. The first thing that causes pain during labor is the contractions. The uterus contracts and relaxes and causes pain to the mother. The lines in the graphs represent the frequency and strengths of the contractions happening in the graphic uterus, and you can see it gets stronger and more prevalent as it gets closer to the delivery date. Here is a more accurate presentation of the women's body anatomy. The picture on the left shows the anatomy of a woman before pregnancy, and on the right, the anatomy of a full-term pregnancy. It is no wonder that you cannot hold your pee or may be constipated in these last few weeks. The intestines are squished together, preventing fecal matter to go through the intestines, while the bladder is also squished, allowing a small amount of urine to hold. This also causes discomfort during labor because of the baby's head is pressing and compressing the bladder and on the bowels. The third thing that also causes pain during labor is during active labor and the stretching of the birth canal. The baby begins to emerge from the vaginal canal, causing the vagina to stretch, also locally known as the ring of fire. There is also the possibility of an episiotomy, but we will cover that shortly. The last cause of pain in labor is not feeling relaxed or supported. When you are not relaxed, your muscles tighten, and all your energy goes to your tightened muscles. This makes you more sensitive to pain and can make you think you cannot get through labor. This is caused by adrenaline, a hormone that plays an important role when a threat presents itself to us, like a tiger chasing us. But pregnancy and childbirth is not a threat. It is important to have a support system to help you relax you in order to save your energy on your labor. Fortunately, this is what we have the most control over during our labor. A healthy support system will help you relax and help put your mind at ease. Childbirth is the moment you've been building up and preparing for, and it is time for you to meet your newborn. That's where oxytocin, the love hormone, comes into play. So what relieves pain during labor? Oxytocin is a hormone produced during labor to help your uterus contract and push your baby out. It is also called the love hormone. It can be released when you feel loved or supported and with skin-to-skin -skin contact. Not surprisingly, oxytocin is also important for breastfeeding. When you are relaxed, your muscles have more energy to help push and deal with the contractions and are less sensitive to pain. In regards to anesthesia options, there are many different options you can choose from. Each person has a different tolerance to pain. 
and you should not feel like you failed if you request or if your provider suggests an epidural or any narcotics. An epidural is a form of local slash regional anesthesia that can be used during labor. That means that you are awake and numb from the waist down. This is the form used for both C-sections and vaginal births, although at different levels. As suggested in the graphic, in a C-section, the epidural is the chest down, while the vaginal birth is waist down. So how can you feel relaxed and supported during labor? If you'd prefer, you can bring your own music to your labor and delivery and listen to a relaxing playlist. Practice breathing techniques and exercises, stay nourished with nuts and fresh fruit, and hydrated with small amounts of water. Having a supportive partner during labor is important as well. We will go over in detail how to properly support your partner during labor in the next few slides. This section will help your partner know what to do while in labor. During the early labor stage, maintain your cool and stay relaxed. If mom sees you relaxed, it will help to put her at ease. If she sees her partner frantic, it will make her worry. Offer comfort and reassurance. Ask her if she'd like a massage, a foot rub, reassure her that she's doing great and that you cannot wait to meet the baby. When offering support, use a calm, cool, collected, soft in your voice. Make eye contact and get on her eye level. Early labor is a long process. You can shorten this time by distracting your partner with a walk, a game, or a movie to ease her pain. If labor occurs at night, make sure you are taking care of your other children. While we do want your partner to get distracted, we do not want her to get worried or anxious. If she's not relaxing, her labor pain worsens. Do not overwhelm her during a contraction with talking or asking questions. She might only need your presence right now. However, through all of this, it is important to keep your strength too. Eat regularly and be your best to keep her strong. During active labor, there are also many different things that you can do to help support your partner. For example, use the relaxation techniques and encouragement to help her through the pain and discomfort. During this process, make sure you communicate with your partner. If you are helping her with her contractions, make sure to communicate with her on what you are doing. Ask her if she wants to be touched before touching her. Once you have a rhythm, keep with that rhythm. Do not switch up the movements quickly. If you are going to stop touching her, make sure you ask and tell her before doing it, as you are changing her rhythm and she has to develop to deal with her contractions. Another thing you can do is to keep track of her contractions. Ask the nurse how to understand and interpret them. It is super important to keep a peaceful, relaxed environment. Keep the lights low, keep the door closed for privacy, and play soft, quiet music. It could also be helpful to remind her to urinate and keep encouraging her and telling her that she's doing great. During the transition stage to full dilation, mom is exhausted and can feel discouraged. Give your partner encouragement and remind her that every contraction brings you closer to the baby. Because she is exhausted and at this point could have been in labor for hours, remind your partner that she should relax between contractions and breathe with her. These contractions will be 2-3 to three minutes apart and last from 60 to 90 seconds. Stage two is delivery. This is the peak of excitement and pain. Continue to give encouragement and inform her of her process. Tell her what you see and how you feel. Tell her when you see the baby's head, hold her hand, but do not get offended if she doesn't want to. Remember, this is the peak of pain. She might only need your presence. This can last minutes to hours. It's the final stretch. Stage three is the placenta delivery. Many people may not know this, but after the baby's delivery and during the first few minutes with your baby, the provider is delivering the placenta, making sure there is no tissue attached to the cervix. At this time, give her all the praise in the world. Take this moment and tell her how much you appreciate her. Even though baby is here, care for mom is not done. Encourage her to drink water. Listen to the instructions from the medical team and ask questions about tests and vaccines so you can make decisions with your partner. Now we're going to switch topics to breathing exercises. We will practice a few helpful techniques for breathing during labor. This is not only applicable to labor, but can help you recenter when you are feeling stressed as well. Repeat this for several minutes with relaxing music. The first step is to inhale for four counts, hold for four counts, and finally exhale for four. Let's practice together. Inhale for four, Hold for four, and exhale for four. Chest breathing are fast and light breaths in the chest area. This breathing exercise will help you during short peaks of very strong contractions and labor. When you exhale, make a pattern of sounds that are easy to make. Abdominal breathing are slow and deep breaths. 
This breathing exercise will help you keep calm. When you breathe out, make sounds that relax your throat. To distinguish chest and abdominal breathing, you can place a hand on your chest and the other on your belly. With chest breathing, your hand on your chest will be moving significantly. It should be rapid, like when you run out of breath from a sprint. With abdominal breathing, your hand on your belly will be moving slowly. Now we are going to switch gears and go over what else you may encounter during your labor. For example, C-sections. Now some C-sections are planned, but more often they are used when a vaginal delivery may be unsafe for mother or baby. Some conditions that may result in having to have a C-section are placenta previa, which is when the placenta is blocking the cervical opening, dystocia, which is when the baby's shoulders are unable to fit through the birth canal, prolonged non-progressive labor, fetal distress, this is when the baby's life is in imminent danger, such as the umbilical cord being wrapped around its neck or a lack of blood from the placenta. C-sections can also result from other medical problems. Here is a video of a C-section and how it works. A cesarean section, often referred to as a C-section, is a surgical procedure in which incisions are made in a woman's abdomen and uterus to deliver a baby. Some cesarean sections are planned. More often, however, the need for the procedure becomes apparent after the onset of labor when abnormal conditions make a vaginal delivery unsafe for the mother or her baby. Common indications for cesarean section include dystocia, placenta previa, and fetal distress. Dystocia, or prolonged non-progressive labor, can occur when the baby's head is unable to fit through the birth canal or its body is in an unfavorable position, such as perpendicular to the birth canal or buttocks first, which is the breech position. Placenta previa occurs when a low-lying placenta partially or completely blocks the cervical opening. Fetal distress occurs whenever the health of the baby is in imminent danger, usually from inadequate blood flow through the placenta or umbilical cord. Fetal distress can occur when the placenta separates from the wall of the uterus prior to delivery or the umbilical cord becomes compressed or squeezed. Other conditions that may require a cesarean section include multiple births, large tumors of the uterus, genital herpes or other infections, or medical problems such as uncontrolled diabetes or hypertension. Your doctor may use ultrasound testing and a fetal heart monitor to help decide whether your baby should be delivered by cesarean. When a cesarean section becomes necessary, you will be prepped for surgery. If not already in place, an intravenous line will be started and a catheter will be inserted into your bladder to drain urine. In the operating room, you will be given anesthesia. In most cases, a spinal anesthetic is administered to numb the lower portion of your body. Sometimes, however, a general anesthetic will be used. Your doctor will begin by making an incision in your abdomen. It will either be a vertical incision from just below the navel to the top of the pubic bone or, more frequently, a horizontal incision across and just above the pubic bone. This is often called a bikini cut. Your doctor will then make a second incision on the lower part of the uterus. Once the uterus is opened, your doctor will rupture the amniotic sac if it is still intact and deliver the baby. The time from the initial abdominal incision to birth is typically five minutes. Your doctor will then clamp and cut the umbilical cord, gently remove the placenta, and tightly suture your uterus and abdomen. This typically takes about 45 minutes. The hospital stay after a cesarean section is usually three to five days. During this time, you will be encouraged to breastfeed, nap when the baby sleeps, and get out of bed often. While most patients are able to take care of their new baby soon after the procedure, full recovery may take six to eight weeks. Your scar will lighten as it heals. Remember that there are actually seven layers that the surgeon must go through for the C-section procedure that is not displayed in the video. Next, we are going to discuss the episiotomy. This is a medical incision that sometimes is made between the anus and the vagina during childbirth if there are any delivery complications. 
episiotomies are now less common and less practiced in the United States. This is only a possibility and is not something to be horribly worried or concerned about. If you have any more additional questions about this, please do not be afraid to ask. Speaking of asking questions, at any time during your labor slash pregnancy, you have the right to ask questions. If you are offered a medication or procedure, we encourage you to ask questions. It is important for you to understand what is being done for you and your baby. Here are some examples of good questions to ask your medical team. Is this an emergency or do we have time to talk it over? This can clarify the level of necessity of a procedure or medication. Could we wait and decide about it later? This can also clarify the level of necessity and help you gain more information about the procedure or medication. What might the benefits be of this? The risks. This helps you be informed about all the possibilities. What might happen if we didn't do it? Again, this can help clarify the level of necessity and allow you to see which would be the preferred outcome for yourself and your baby. What are other things we could try first or instead? This can, again, give you options on what is best for you and your baby. Asking questions will help you to be fully informed of what's happening through your labor. This can give you some peace of mind and power in your delivery of your baby. Now we have a little activity. In our third trimester packets that we give or send to you, we have a piece of paper that is labeled birth plan. If you do not have this paper yet, we will provide a link in the bio to a PDF form of the document. Or just use a piece of paper to write this on your own. We recommend all our moms and expecting mothers write out an explanation of what they want in their birth and what they do not want in their birth. Write out who you want there, who you don't want there, if you for sure want any medications or anesthesia, if you want the baby naturally, if you are open to medications, or even if you have any special requests. Take a moment and pause the video and write anything down that you can think of right now that you would like to have or do during your labor process. It is okay to change your mind later in the pregnancy as well. Also, we discussed before in your third trimester, it is important to be prepared for the arrival of your baby. We recommend you pack your hospital bag early in your third trimester just in case of preterm labor. Due to COVID, the hospital is limiting the in and out flow of patients, so during your birth, you are only allowed to have one guest with you. So make sure your guest is packed with a few days worth of clothes and any items that they may want slash need. Now, we are going to do an overview of changes in your life after the baby comes. After giving birth, it is important to keep the following things in mind. Postpartum changes, breastfeeding, safe sleeping with a newborn, birth control, and postpartum checkups. The first thing to consider is the changes you could possibly experience postpartum. First, what is postpartum? Well, postpartum refers to six weeks after birth when you start a new life with your baby. A newborn baby means great changes in your life in a variety of ways. The first thing to discuss is that postpartum can include different emotional changes. With birth, there is a lot of anticipation for the arrival of your baby. Your hormone levels will return to normal over the next few weeks and this can cause you to feel not yourself. It is possible that you could feel discouraged or depressed. These baby blues are common in first time moms and only last no more than a few days. If your depressed feelings persist, you should contact your provider immediately as you may be suffering symptoms of postpartum depression. Not only are there emotional changes, but there are obvious physical changes as well. Here we have a picture of the female reproductive system one week after birth. We can see that the uterus is much bigger and thickened, and the vagina is stretched. In the next picture, six weeks postpartum, we can see the uterus is much smaller and contracted, back to its normal size of around two ounces. The vagina has also returned to its normal state. During pregnancy, the uterus increases its pre-pregnancy weight by 11 times. It weighs more than 2 pounds after your birth, around the size of a grapefruit. After birth, it returns to the size of a small lemon. Here is another check-in quiz. True or false? Becoming depressed after giving birth is not normal and means you should not be a mother. Either answer the question in your head or you can write it down on some paper. The correct answer is false. As we discussed in the previous slides, baby blues are very common in new moms and should only last a few days. Once again, if the symptoms do not go away after a few days, please contact your provider. We will have a video more specifically on postpartum that you can watch to get more information on signs and symptoms of postpartum depression. Something to consider during your pregnancy is your choice on whether you want to breastfeed or not. 
Whatever you decide, your provider should support and educate you accordingly. However, breastfeeding is recommended for your baby's health. Breastfeeding has many benefits such as easily digested and nutritious, protects against infections, reduces risk of diseases for mother, convenient, free, and environmentally friendly. You can lose weight faster and contributes to a special relationship with your baby. So we are going to start with the anatomy of the breast. The brown skin around the nipple is called the areola. It darkens and the size grows during pregnancy due to hormonal changes. This will return to normal after you stop breastfeeding. The nipple has small openings that the milk flows out of. There are tiny muscles around the nipple that cause the nipple to become hard, and this happens when it is stimulated from the baby. The milk is produced inside the glands and moves to the nipple through the milk ducts. There are three C's of breastfeeding that we are going to talk about. These can lead to the best results of comfortability for you and your baby. The first C is calm. Skin to skin contact will help calm you and the baby. Skin to skin contact is not exclusively for moms, but great for partners as well. The second C is comfortable. Breastfeeding can be challenging. Having a pillow to utilize will help you support baby's weight, help elevate baby's feet, and overall help getting the horizontal position we want the baby to be in when breastfeeding. Having that pillow as a guide will be comfortable for you and the baby. The last C is close. When breastfeeding, hold the baby close in the horizontal position. Breastfeeding is a natural process and a learned skill for both mom and the baby. I believe this is our last question for our mini quiz. Here's one question to test your knowledge of breastfeeding. So, what are the three C's of breastfeeding? One, cool, close, caring. Two, crib, comfortable, close. Three, calm, close, caring. And number four, calm, comfortable, close. Take a moment and think about what we just talked about. It's not the first option. It is important to keep your cool, be patient, hold your baby close and care for your baby. However, it is not the correct answer. Nor the second option. Having a crib for your baby to have a safe place to sleep is very important and a topic we will talk about. However, it is not part of our three C's of breastfeeding. Being comfortable is important for both you and baby as well, as you will be breastfeeding every two hours for about six months. Being comfortable and having baby close to you is great as well. It's not the third option either, so those who chose calm, comfortable, and close would be correct. Caring for your baby is expected. However, it is not included in the three C's of breastfeeding. Being close to the baby with skin-to-skin -skin contact in a comfortable position is ideal and needed both for baby and mom. After breastfeeding and burping, the baby is most likely sleep. Having a safe place for a baby to sleep is essential. What is safe sleep? Safe sleep is putting your baby to sleep to protect them from dangers like choking, suffocation, and sudden infant death syndrome, known as SIDS. Babies sleep the safest when they are on their backs, in their own cribs, in an enclosed area, and alone. Place babies on their back to sleep at all times. You may be worried about babies choking on their vomit. However, the windpipe and their anatomy prevents them from choking while sleeping on their back. Babies who sleep on their back have a low chance of dying from SIDS to those who sleep on their side. Here we see a demonstration of the baby's anatomy. This picture shows a closed windpipe, causing baby to choke. We do not recommend having baby to sleep on their belly. Babies are safer when the windpipe is on top of the food tube and open. Therefore, having baby sleep on their back is standard. Use a firm and flat mattress in a closed crib. Only use adjustable sheets. An exterior sheet increases the risk of death related to sleep. Remove pillows, blankets, toys out of the crib and do not cover the baby's head because they can increase the risk of suffocation and overheating. If you are worried about your baby being cold, use a wearable blanket. Sleep close to your baby. Put them in the same room where you sleep, but do not sleep in the same bed as your baby. Keep them in the same room with you until they are 6 months, but ideally when you're old. To summarize safe sleep, memorize the ABC. A. Baby sleep safest alone. B. Baby sleep safest on their backs. C. Baby sleep safest in cribs. Contraceptives are an important aspect to consider after giving birth. It is recommended that women try to prevent pregnancy at least one year after giving birth for the body to heal. 
There are several different birth control methods for your choosing with the help of your provider. If you'd like an overview about birth control, please look for our birth control video and or ask your provider for more information pertaining to you. As a patient of the 16th Street Clinic, a nurse will call you in the morning after your delivery to schedule a pediatrician appointment for your baby. This pediatrician appointment is an alternative to our home visits. Due to COVID restrictions, we recommend only mom and the baby to come to the appointment. We weigh the baby to make sure that there is a weight gain and how the baby is latching if you chose to breastfeed. If needed, a lactation specialist is on hand to help with breastfeeding. The nurse will also schedule you a postpartum appointment with your OB provider three to four weeks after delivery to check your uterus and or your stitches are healing correctly. However, if your baby was born outside of St. Mary's, it is your responsibility to call the clinic immediately to make that pediatrician and postpartum appointment. Well, that wraps up our prenatal class online. We wish we could have seen you all in person, but due to COVID, we have some different circumstances in our world. Thank you for your cooperation. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment or ask a question in the link we provided or call our clinic. All our questions will be confidential and answered by either of us or a nurse if need be. Also, please stay tuned as we will be continuing to post different educational videos that can help educate you throughout your pregnancy. Please make sure you are following the clinic on all social media platforms to be informed when we post our videos. Thank you all so much for watching.